Well, welcome to the service of morning prayer for St. Thomas's Belleville. We're happy to have you with us. And this week, of course, we have marked the uh, first uh, National Day of uh, Reconciliation. And so um, we will incorporate some prayers into our service in recognition of that. God's love has been poured into our hearts. Through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. The Lord be with you. And also with you. As we rejoice in the gift of this day. So may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to bring good tidings to the afflicted. The Lord has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty for the captives and release for those in prison. To comfort all who mourn, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning a garment of splendor for the heavy heart. They shall be called trees of righteousness, planted for the glory of the Lord. Confession. The spirit of truth comes to convict of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. Let us then open our hearts and confess our sins in penitence and faith. We pray together. God, God of, of all, all mercy, mercy we, we humbly admit, admit that, that we, we need, need your help. help. We, we have, have wandered, wandered from, from your way. way. We, we have sinned, sinned in thought, thought word, and, and deed, and have and failed, failed to do what is right. right. You, you alone can save us. Have, have mercy on us. us. Wipe out our sins, our sins and teach us, us to forgive others. others. Bring, Bring forth, forth the fruit, the fruit of, of your spirit, spirit that we, we may live the new life to your glory. This we ask in the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. From the first letter of St. John, if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the perfect offering for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. We continue with our readings. Psalm 26 of David. Vindicate me, O Lord, for I have walked in my integrity, and I have trusted in the Lord without wavering. Prove me, O Lord, and try me. Test my heart and mind. For your steadfast love is before my eyes, and I walk in faithfulness to you. I do not sit with the worthless, nor do I consort with hypocrites. I hate the company of evildoers and will not sit with the wicked. I wash my hands in innocence and go around your altar, O Lord, singing aloud a song of thanksgiving and telling all your wondrous deeds. O Lord, I love the house in which you dwell and the place where your glory abides. Do not sweep me away with sinners, nor my life with the bloodthirsty. Those in whose hands are evil devices and whose right hands are full of bribes. But as for me, I walk in my integrity. Redeem me and be gracious to me. My foot stands on level ground. In the great congregation, I will bless the Lord. The letter to the Hebrews. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he also created the world. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being, and he sustains all things by his powerful word. When he had made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. Now God did not subject the coming world about which we are speaking to angels, but someone has testified somewhere, what are human beings? that you are mindful of them, or mortals, that you care for them. You have made them for a little while lower than the angels. You have crowned them with glory and honor, subjecting all things under their feet. Now in subjecting all things to them, God left nothing outside their control. As it is, we do not yet see everything in subjection to them, but we do see Jesus who for a little while was made lower than the angels, 
now crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering of death, so that by the grace of God, he might taste death for everyone. It was fitting that God, for whom and through whom all things exist, in bringing many children to glory, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For the one who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one Father. For this reason, Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters, saying, I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. The Holy Gospel for today is taken from the 10th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Mark, beginning at the second verse. Some Pharisees came, and to test him they asked, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? He answered them, What did Moses command you? They said, Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of dismissal and to divorce her. But Jesus said to them, Because of your hardness of heart, he wrote this commandment for you. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Then in the house of the disciples asked him again about this matter. He said to them, Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. People were bringing little children to him in order that he might touch them. And the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, Let the little children come to me. Do not stop them. For it is such of, as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly, I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. The Gospel of Christ. Before we approach this week's Gospel reading, which is a, uh, an interesting one, a little bit of a challenging one, but I don't actually think it's as challenging as what we have made it out to be over the centuries. Before we approach that text, I want us to stop and think a little bit about things we already know about Jesus. We know that Jesus' main message is around love, love of God, love for our neighbor, love for self. We know that he has regularly had standoffs with the Pharisees, the Sadducees. Those are the sort of religious zealots of his day, you know, nitpicky, big on every single one of the rules and all that sort of thing. We know that Jesus always sides with the outcast, the downtrodden, the marginalized, whether it's lepers, prostitutes, a, a whole number of people. He always sides with the outcast and the afflicted. So now in Jesus's day, with uh, a certificate of divorce, as he mentions um, in this passage, that was something that had developed, but only men could do that, right? Women did not have that sort of right. And so if a man wanted to um, get rid of his wife, he needed no reason at all. There was no real legal um, ramification, there was no like legal recourse upon which she could fall. Um, completely and totally 100% dependent on the whims of a husband. So men had all of the power in that. So when you approach this text, there's a, a couple of pretty significant words in the setup to it that I think uh, it's important we not gloss over quickly. Why did the Pharisees come to ask Jesus this question? Is it that they really want to hear his opinion or they want to engage him in conversation or anything like that? Absolutely not. What the text says very clearly is they came to test him. And so I think that Jesus is, when I say playing a little bit of a game with them, what I mean is he is confronting them 
uh, holding back up to them a mirror for their literalism, their judgmentalism, and their hardness of heart. So he's saying, well, sure, there's this allowance for writing a certificate of divorce. Um, yes, in a literal sense, that's true. But in a literal sense, what does that actually mean according to the law of Moses about which you people seem to be so picky? That's how I hear a part of what he is saying in this text. And again, he always comes down on the side of the downtrodden, the afflicted, the oppressed. So do you think that he is really casting aspersions against, for instance, women in this text? It doesn't fit. If we take that interpretive approach to this text, then it doesn't fit any of the rest of what we know about Jesus. Another significant uh, part of this text and its message is notice that if you look at the, the broader story, uh, picture of Mark's Gospel, this story is sandwiched directly between two um, stories about Jesus and children and accepting children and saying how we have to have the heart of a child um, to enter the kingdom of God. And so do any of you, I'm sure a lot of you have had enough interactions with little ones, you know, three-year-olds, four-year-olds, five-year-olds, little tykes like that. And there's, there's in a sense an innocence about little kids like that, but there's also something that's kind of raw about them. And what I mean by that is all of our sense of social um, courtesies and um, inhibitions and, and all those sorts of things, those seem to be completely and totally absent in kids. So there, I've got a little neighborhood, uh, three and a little bit year old, and he comes often and jumps on the trampoline in the backyard, he and his dad and all that sort of stuff. And well, you know, if he wants a juice, he asks me for a juice. Um, if I don't have juice in the house to give to him, well, he's, he uh, communicates very clearly his upset about that. And, it, you know, so like there's something raw and innocent about little ones. There's an honesty about how they navigate their way through the world. And I can't help but hear this teaching of Jesus as uh, chastising all of those games that seem to get played in the adult world. And when Jesus is using the example of children, have you noticed a, how all of those false constructs we set up as adults by which we divide the world up and put people into categories and their boxes and the definitions and assumptions that we think we can make depending on what category and box we've put a, a person in. Have you noticed how with, with little kids, that whole world just doesn't seem to exist even. They just are who they are. There's a simplicity to that. And I think Jesus is suggesting to us in this teaching about, the, or the, the thrust of this teaching is about us thinking how we treat one another, the assumptions we bring to the world, um, the how we treat people who are cast out. And when he contrasts all of that with the issue of children, He's sending a message to us that all are welcome in the kingdom of God. All of us. God created you exactly how you are. God didn't create you, oh, you know, and, and have to lighten you only if you fit into particular preset categories that change over the course of time and definitions. That, that's not how it works. God created you and loves you fully for who you are. Who you are fully. God loves fully. That's what I take out of these readings. They call us to reflect on how we treat one another, how we live our love out with one another in the world, and that maybe we would all uh, benefit some from approaching uh, that living out of our discipleship, playing fewer games, and just approach that with uh, wonder and joy and sense of mystery that children seem to do so well. Amen.
continue with the Apostles' Creed. <clears throat> I believe in God, the Father, the Father Almighty, Almighty, Creator, creator of, of heaven, heaven and, and earth. earth. I, believe I believe in Jesus in Christ, Christ, God's, God's only, only Son, Son, our Lord, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, Mary suffered, suffered under Pontius, Pontius Pilate, Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On, On the third day he rose from the, dead. from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Her prayers. Come, Holy Spirit, Creator. And renew the face of the earth. Come. Holy Spirit, Counselor and Advocate. Touch our lips that we may pray aright and proclaim your word. Come, Holy Spirit, power from on high. Make us agents of peace and ministers of wholeness. We remember before you all those people we know to be in need of prayer, the sick, the lonely, those who despair, those who are afraid. We remember all those people touched by indigenous issues across this country for past abuses, for current injustices. Come Holy Spirit, giver and life. Breathe on your church and make us a living people, holy and free. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, bond of love. Pour your love into our hearts that we may serve you with joy. Collect from the national resources. Creator God, from you, every family in heaven and earth takes its name. You have rooted and grounded us in your covenant love and empowered us by your spirit to speak the truth in love and to walk in your way towards justice and wholeness. Mercifully grant that your people, journeying together in partnership, may be strengthened and guided to help one another to grow into the full stature of Christ, who is our light and our life. Amen. Call it for this week. Sovereign God, you have created us to live in loving community with one another. Form us for life that is faithful and steadfast, and teach us to trust like little children, so that we may reflect the image of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. We say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, Father in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your, your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, your, your will be done on earth as in heaven. heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Come, O Spirit of God, and make within us your dwelling place and home. May our darkness be dispelled by your light, our troubles calmed by your peace. May all evil be redeemed by your love, all pain transformed through the suffering of Christ, and all dying glorified by his risen life. Amen. Giver of life and love, we thank you that you invigorate and renew us. Living in the unity of the Spirit, may we boldly use your gifts to continue your work in the world. God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. May we rekindle the gift of God within us. O God, stir up within us the gift of the Spirit, that we may confess Jesus Christ as Lord and proclaim the joy of the everlasting gospel wherever we may be. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Well, I hope you have a spectacular week, and hopefully in the next couple of weeks, Thanksgiving weekend, in fact, uh, so that's a week from Sunday, uh, we should be back in person in church. So look very much looking forward to that. Have a great week.